My name is Esteban. You can call me Esto. Esto. Okay. Esto. Yes, sir. Esto and Pat. Gentlemen, yeah. uh, so you guys are night owls like me, obviously. It's like around 10 p.m. Yeah. where you guys are at right now. Yeah, yes, sir. 10. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, it's, it's 10 out here. What, what is it? At eight, 8 o'clock there? Yeah, it's 8 o'clock. So it's, uh, I still got a few more hours of work. And then, you know, we got to get rest. We got to give that mind and that body that rest, especially when you get a little older, man, because I'm in my late 30s already. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, you look good for your 30s. We're catching up to you, man. <laughs> we're both 33. So, oh, it's 32, 30, I'm 32. Uh, <laughs> He's aging me a little bit. Man, that's, that's, a, that's a good time. So, are you guys in a partnership right now? Yeah. So, um, we actually just got all the inventory. We used your, your girl, Cindy. Um, we just got all our inventory in about a week and a half ago, and we just started putting it together. Um, and yeah, we went half. I have my own uh, carpentry business here in Chicago as well. Um, so I started that three years ago and then, you know, I've been, I've been dealing with a lot of event rental companies. I build a lot of things for them and I'm just seeing how all these event rental companies are just blowing up. I'm like watching these companies just grow while, while I'm growing. And I'm like, and I wanted to, wanted to get into obviously the photo booth rental. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a, it's a busy season right now, Pat. What about you, Esther? What do you do? I'm a full time. I'm in uh, logistics, so I'm a carrier broker. I've been doing that for about six years now. So basically, you gentlemen uh, are, are just you just want to have a, a supplement your overall monthly incomes, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And we, I also bartend at uh, like one of the top clubs in the city of Chicago. That's good. That means you have you have a decent network already built in for your 360 booth business, yeah, Pat? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big network. Cool. I'm just taking notes here for myself. By the way, I'm recording this session, so whatever we discuss, you guys can always go back to the video and watch, uh, rewatch it as you need to, kind of like hear the answers that I have for you guys and all that great stuff. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So, uh, how long have you had your business for? You know, that's a good question, Pat, because it's people think I've had it for a long time, and in reality, I just completed a full year in the photo booth business in uh, this past March. One year? Oh my God, that's amazing. Good for you. Yeah. So once I got started, man, I, I told myself like, uh, and this, this is due to a lot of other businesses didn't go as planned, but all that experience kicked in this time around. Uh, yeah. but yeah, that, that's what I've been doing. And, and every single day is an opportunity for me to just continue investing in myself and then continue seeing my business grow in different ways. Yeah. Cause you're, you're, you're in Santa Monica. Is that where you're at? I'm uh I'm an hour and twenty minutes away from Santa Mana Monica. I'm in I'm out in San Bernardino. It's more in the Inland Empire. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Awesome. I've actually never been to Cali. I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 beautiful. It's but then again, right now with just the weather has been very uh unpredictable now nowadays. Out there in Cali. Yeah, like uh this year we got a bunch of snow here in, in the close to the desert where and it, it was like eight feet of snow and it's just been very very random but um yeah it, it, it's a good place to visit but uh chicago i've been out to chicago before and i love chicago because chicago actually has real seasons you know yeah uh, yeah. yeah we get you, everything we're in yeah. our they say we're in our third winter right now <laughs> cool, man um do you guys have a set of list of questions you guys want to tackle yeah. or uh, yeah yeah i have a few questions um uh, I guess from the operational standpoint of, um, we were asking about, so we set up our 360 booth and when it was spinning around, um, the first couple of videos we took, it wasn't getting the whole body. Okay. And, uh, we just wanted to know what proper, what position do you put yours in? Like, yeah. So, uh, let me, let me grab the arm on my 360 booth and show you guys the arm on my 360 booth to give you guys a visual. Okay. Okay. And what's interesting about this industry, gentlemen, is that sometimes you just take that one event, and from that event, it's like this snowball effect where you're booked every single week for months out. And man, like when that happens, it's like you just continue investing into the business, get more equipment, yeah. and it's 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 a beautiful thing, man. So I'm excited for your journey because you guys are barely getting started. And like I said, the 360 booth is now known. When I first started, yeah. It was getting popular, but it's been a full year since then, and people caught on to it really quick. Um, so your arm looks like this. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Same one. Yep. yep. Yeah. 
So you want to make sure that this part is going to be at the at lowest possible. And I think yours might have come with a screw right here. No, no screw there. No screw. Okay. I was going to say I removed mine to drop it as low as possible right here. Okay. It's going to be as low as possible. And then when you insert this into the actual booth, uh, at one point I was leaving one, one of these holes in the outside to make it stick out more. But what I noticed too is when we get bigger individuals on top of the booth, it kind of does this and it wobbles on the top because of the amount of uh, people like moving and shifting that, uh, that weight around. So what I started, yeah. doing, I would insert it all the way in and lock it in here and lock it in here. And just, I don't really mess with the middle one. So I lock it in here. Now, another thing that's going to dictate the, the width of your video is the actual size of template you guys select. Do you guys know what size you guys are selecting uh, right now? That no, you so, this, so honestly, um, I, Honestly, we've just been using, I've just been doing it on my, um, the, 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 the normal, uh, on my phone, just recording a video. We yeah. have Snapic, what you use. Okay. And I was on it and I was kind of, that we, we need some more help with that. We're going to hopefully book you for, you know, these next couple of days if you have some time. Yeah. Maybe I just wanted to talk to you today before I booked another one. Um, we definitely need help with the Snapic. I was just putting the, I was just using the ultra wide because we got, we got all iPhone 14 Pro Maxes. Yeah, so the ultra wide works works decent, but when you switch it to the ultra wide, it it's not as a sharp video. And it, and and I'm sure you guys want to capture sharp videos, smooth videos, yeah. especially because these are your first potential clients. These are like prospects, right? And so yeah. the, the better the production, the better because after that the event is over. Now you and Esto can start taking some of those videos and promote on YouTube, on Google, across all social media platforms. And that video is a representation of your business as far as the quality goes when it comes to the production. So, okay. and then another, another thing, while you guys are at that event that's coming up, uh, it's, it's a really good idea to capture a lot of things that are going on in the background. Uh, meaning like the people smiling, the people laughing, photos, everything. That way you guys have a combined, a, a combination of everything. Cause it's a human thing where everyone wants to associate themselves with that experience. Yeah. So try to take videos at the actual party, uh, you know, get plenty of 360 videos and also get a lot of footage and portrait mode so that you can utilize that on TikTok and every, everywhere else. Yeah. And if you decide to shoot this way with your phone while you're at the event, uh, getting, you know, photos of everyone having a good time and videos, if you shoot in 4K, then later on, you could take that 4K video that was shot in landscape mode and even yeah. and also have it as a reel because it's 4k there's enough size where it'll be it'll be nice and, and uh, it'll fit in the actual reel when it gotcha. comes to that. so dimension so just just a heads up to shoot up and uh, shoot in 4k and your phones are perfectly yeah we use uh, i've been shooting in 4k 60 frames per second yeah yeah now if if i take you guys over to to snap it i can take you over to snap it right now and show you exactly what template that I use in the actual settings that I'm using on the dashboard. Because if you and I have the same exact booth, Patrick uh, and Esto, then we should have very, very similar, uh, how can I say, a ratio of how much uh, part of the actual body comes out in the full screen. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, so, um, I mean, we, we can cover that, but go ahead. No, he's are you you're not using an ipad are you using your cell phone when you're shooting these uh, 360 bits yes sir i'm using a standard iphone 13 so the 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 footage okay. on your iphone 14 pro is going to come out a bit better actually okay. it's you're going to notice how smooth it looks so oh, yeah big time i got the, i just i got the 14 pro max um i got it shit like two months ago and everyone when i'm posting on my normal page the fucking difference is amazing. Yeah, it is a big have it. So and everyone's like, dude, you got a nice ass camera. I'm like, it's the iPhone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it does everything for you. Once you set up the actual event, all you have to do is just airdrop it. And also your iPhone 14 Pro Max, it has a really fast processor too. So those those videos are gonna render in less than 30 seconds. So that oh, also wow. gives you guys the opportunity to keep that line going because sometimes you'll be at events where there's an actual pretty long line of people waiting to get on the booth. Yeah. There's another thing that I want to really just, sure. yeah, I want to poke into this really fast is, you know, you guys, now that you guys are using Snapic, you guys have the option to have the videos as, as short as you want or as long as you want. So if someone in the future tells you guys, yeah, we're planning to have a 500 guest, but our budget is, you know, 
we can afford to pay you guys for a two hour booking, say for example, right? Then that yeah. means that you those 500 guests are gonna have to be squeezed in within a two hour period. So that means that you guys don't wanna have all of your videos set for 30 seconds long because then it's going to take a longer time to render because it's a longer file. And if you guys decide, have you guys already experimented a little bit with Snappic, like creating an event? No, I'm, I'm not really. Okay. No. If we have time, I'll, I'm going to try to get all to all your questions. If we have time, I'm going to dive into Snappic with both of you guys. And I'm going to show you the settings that I select. That way you guys actually get a visual and use this exact same video here right now to circle Perfect. back and, and do the same settings. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. We would have to get the static up. That's, it seems like a, it's, a, it's a pretty a, easy app to use once you get the hang of it. Right. I mean, Absolutely. for example, like for this party we're throwing, um, we could use like two templates. It was it use one or two. How many templates did you use? So when I go to a, an event, what I started doing is I'll have several templates. Now, when I say templates, I'm not referring to overlays. I'm referring to different styles of speed ramps, slow-mo and effects. So on my phone, I can select one, two, or which one I want to select, and I can name it and save it too, so that when I go and have another event, I can dive into Snappic and just select a saved preset, save it as a preset, so I don't have to play with it. All I'm doing now is saving that preset and then inserting that overlay, that customized overlay for that particular gotcha. event. And it's a it's a time saver, and it works great. Do you uh, when you make your templates? Do you make it on Snappic or do you use Canva? I always use Canva. Yeah, I use Canva all the time. So okay. Because with Canva, you can do something like 50th uh, birthday on the on the search engine, and it gives yeah. all this uh, all these overlays. And all you do is you click on it, you edit it, and then you just resize it, and it already did most of the work for you. So I find that really really productive, really efficient. And how do you how do you transfer that over to uh, Snapic? Is it is it pretty easy? Pretty yeah, simple. I, I can, like I said, everything so far, the, the questions that you've asked me, I can actually give you guys a visual on my screen by sharing my screen. Um, uh, so just let me know, like, yeah, let's go ahead and, okay. and move forward with this. So you guys just let me know. Cause I can do that for you too, as well. Yeah. I guess, okay. I, I have a few other questions, I guess, before Snapic is, um, I saw that I was watching some of your videos, you know, when the, uh, when the people from the events get on the thing, you like, you center them. What do you tell them? I saw you that you were like, hey, get get on here. You know, how do you tell the uh, the guests to act when it's coming around? Yeah, so like, you guys keep in mind that you guys are in a position of power. It's, in fact, you guys are the actual directors uh, when it comes to your production. Because it's, it's true. Yeah. It is. You guys bring a platform and the platform is going to range in sizes from 85 to 100 to 115 centimeters. So the bigger your platform is, the bigger the production, the more you guys can charge, right? More money. Uh, but in this case is if when you guys show up to an event, you guys, I would say still to this day, I want to say a good maybe 70% of the people have never been on a 360 booth before. And so yeah. your job is to center them and center your phone so that before you hit record on your device, they're right in the middle of the frame. Now, always look down at your platform and make sure that everyone's back to back right in the center. A lot of folks like uh, sometimes you get older couples who just want to be side by side. And, yeah. and you tell them like, hey, we can shoot the video like this. However, this is a 360 uh, booth and it's a rotating arm. So you can have your own moment of shine, your spotlight, if you guys go back to back because it's going to capture you regardless. It's going to go around. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's how I get folks right in the middle. And, and that's, it's really no secret. It's just about uh, getting eyeballing it. Yeah, yeah. But both on your phone, how, it, how it's mounted on, on your phone and also on the booth. So it's a combination of both. And that's how you get people right in the center, even if it's one or two or three or four people. When it's one, they have more time, they have more space to dance around and do stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. when you when every when everything is really tight, you want to make sure that you, they're right in the center, back to back. Now, now, when you do get, say, you just get one guest on the on the three hundred and sixty machine, um, do you get most guests that will like turn around with the camera, or you kind of tell them to stay in one spot in a way? You know that's a, that's that's a, that's interesting. Here's the thing, when it's an individual and it's and you guys are gonna come across this, especially in the industry that you guys are you guys are bartending, right? Yeah. You get a guest that you already know, you can even smell them like they're a little tipsy. Yeah, for sure. I'm not gonna encourage them to dance on the booth by themselves because I don't want <laughs> yeah. them to lose their balance and then break my arm or step on the arm or the step away yeah. and then the arm hits them. But if it's a guest that's, you know. You know they they they're 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 not drunk. 
then I'll it, like, especially if it's a girl, cause girls love modeling. So if it's a girl yeah. with a nice dress, I say, Hey, flaunt that dress, play with your hair. When I say action, it's your time to shine. So she'll have the whole platform to herself. So she'll do a little, a little twirl and, you know, el she has elbow space and everything to do whatever she wants. So it, it goes back to you guys being the director and just kind of yeah. get a feel for that person that's about to go on the platform. Got gotcha. 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 Yeah. Okay. What was my other question? Um, Oh, have you had someone? Have you had someone hit your arm before? A couple times already. A couple times, and it's 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 always been so far. It's been straight up accidental. Like what happens is, every say there's like four people on the booth, and they're they're like you know larger adults. One girl will probably back get get a one girl will hit the skinny girl, and the skinny girl will kind of like go forward and lose her footing, and then step out of the of the booth, and that's another yeah. thing. Right? On the booth, you want to you want to make sure that, especially if you get a bunch of guys with big feet, right? And there's four of them; they're pretty big guys. You want to tell them, remind them, like guys, keep your shoes tucked in inside the actual platform. You don't want the shoes sticking out too much because you don't want it okay. to rip the the arm as it's spinning around. Um, but yeah, I, I've had a few incidents, uh, Pat, where people hit the arm. It wasn't too bad to a point where it bent or it broke or anything like that. Uh, but it happens. And this is another reason why you guys have to constantly keep eyeballs as soon as you hit that button and it spin because we're responsible for, for whatever goes wrong. Or, I mean, we take credit yeah. when everything goes out great, but sometimes you'll have an incident and we got to just eye, eyes on the booth at all times. Okay. Yeah. Um, what, what size is it? How many do you have? How many actual photo uh, 360s do you have? Right now at the moment, I have three and then I have two digital photo booths both different styles. One has a, a three foot LCD screen and the other one just has a light up panel, two different panels. That's where I'm at right now. Okay. Yeah, we got, we bought, we got the 115 centimeter. Oh man. Then we got the 100 and then we got two of the photo booths. So we have four setups right now. No way. That's amazing, dude. You guys starting off real, real, real strong, especially with that 115. Yeah. So guys really quick on that 115 booth, did you guys get the zip, the zip case, the protective case? Because the flight. Yeah, we got. Oh no, we didn't. We didn't get that. We didn't get that uh, case. We have it. What it came in that case, but we didn't get the thing to go around it. Yeah, I highly recommend getting the pouch that zips around it. It's 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 a it's a not only is it way less in weight, but also takes up less space. It's just way more portable, more more compact. It's truly what it is. Oh, okay. So you don't use the actual like suitcase think, thing? No, uh, one I sold on offer of for really, really cheap. And then the other one, I think I just donated it to someone that thought it looked really cool and they wanted to put stuff inside because that thing is massive and heavy. And those little wheels that had one guy, uh, <laughs> I had one guy, his, he was standing next to his uh, 360 booth and the flight case, I guess, lost its balance. And he tried to save it, but it hit his leg. And he showed me he had a huge bruise on his leg from that flight case hitting his leg. I was like, damn. Jesus. Yeah, no, that's, they, they fell a couple they of times and scared the shit out of us. Yeah, they're pretty heavy. Ah, that's funny. Um, okay, so we have that. Um, so for your sharing station, do you use a do you use an iPad or are you? Yeah, for my sharing stations, I have an iPad sixth generation, which is an older iPad. That okay. iPad has 64 gigs, and that's more than enough. A lot of folks want to get the latest and greatest. And I say, if that's the case, if you're going to spend a lot of money on an iPad, then get an iPad Air 5th generation. That way, when you scale and you buy like a booth with a shell, you can actually use that iPad for either a sharing station, but it'll be way more profitable and a better investment if you use it as a selfie booth, uh, as, a, as a social media booth, when you put it inside of your the shell yeah. of the selfie booth so we got the, we got the, we got two ipad pros so we got them we got two ipad pros we're gonna use one for the photo booth at the party and then we'll use the other ipad pro as the sharing station for the 360 wow that's amazing man you guys have a luxury setup yeah, yeah you know what i love i love making videos so i was i was like we need to get the nicest camera because i do it for bartending i'm always and i've done it for my other page and dude i've made so much money off of instagram just by Having good videos and shit like that, just it just yeah. We get. I was like, we might as well just get the best shit in the beginning. And yeah. Build from there. You know. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. That's amazing. It's great. You already have experience when it comes to like videography, so you already have an eye for it. You know, that's that's a huge advantage. Oh yeah, yeah. Like they're always like, man, you're always making fucking videos. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm like, trust me, it's gonna it's gonna make us money. Yeah, that's great, guys. Congratulations, that's awesome. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, what other questions did I have? Zooms that big. Oh, that when you put that light on that U two hundred light, when you put that on that actual photo booth. Yep. How could you show us how you do that? Yeah, I know that. So this is going to be your U200 light and that U200 light, what I'm going to do is, you guys want to grab yours? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's right here on the stairs. Is that the one, the other one was dying outside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the U200 light, I have this set up just like this on the side. So this is basically okay. what you would call either vertical or uh, portrait mode, not landscape. And yep. when, when I first started the 360 booth business, I was setting it up like this. And later on, a few months later, I ended up adjusting how I was doing it because I realized that this was way more effective. So this side is facing the attendee, okay? And this, yeah. this, this side that's facing my face is facing me. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this right here, which you guys have, the same, same model, and I'm going to tilt it to the side now. It's facing this way. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding the arm just like this. Side. We didn't Sideways. Adjust. We didn't... Yeah. Sideways. This is going to uh, minimize the, the wear and tear. The wear and tear, and it's gonna minimize the the wobbles that you guys can sometimes get by doing it the old school way where I was doing it, where I was setting it up up here. Plus, yeah. So right here now it's tucked in. So this this is the style I rolled it, in. and then of course my phone is gonna be facing this way like this. Okay. And this black piece right here is on this side, which means I have the entire screen on my end. So that I can airdrop that video directly to say free. Well, here's another thing. When you guys are at the party, yeah, you guys have a long line. If your iPhone 14 Pro Max is gonna render that video pretty quickly, what you can do is if one of them has an iPhone, just let them know, hey guys, it's for you guys, or don't even say that, just say, Hey guys, let, go ahead and turn on your airdrop. Whoever's phone pops up right here, I'm gonna send it to you. It's gonna take two seconds. And if you guys can send it to the rest of the squad, that'd be cool. So that way you're not there on your phone looking for whose phone is available through airdrop. You just send it to that one gotcha. before. And you save a lot of time. Plus, they already know like. Oh, okay, wait. Say, say that again. Um, okay, so we have we actually I hired. Um, we have people running our three hundred and sixty photo booth this for the party. Okay. So this, I have one of my one of my girls. She's gonna be running it. So she could like send them to me then, right? Like, is that what you're saying? Like, she'll be up there. Video ends. She sends the video, airdrops it to me or something. If, if Can't she airdrop it to the sharing station? So, it, all right. So, I, I just want to make sure I'm understanding your question. So, so someone's going to be working the 360 booth, and and where are you going to be at, Pat? We're we're just gonna. I mean, we'll be obviously helping okay. with everything, but we're just gonna be talking with everyone. Obviously, we're gonna be there around in the beginning. Yeah. Um, but you know, she eventually she's gonna be working for us. Yeah, I mean the the event space is not massive, so it's gonna be more intimate. So we wanted her to con like run it while we're like around introducing every like basically interacting with with the guests, and then we're also gonna be like interacting on the three hundred and sixty to learn it ourselves as well. So. So a good strategy would be for this particular situation, given the circumstances and the manpower and the size of the event. What I would do is this: have her. Uh, be the director, meaning the person who's recording, who's telling them where to stand, right? And then you're going to have Pat. I don't know exactly what Pat's going to do, but the, for that, the fact that both of you guys are going to be there kind of like uh, circulating, one of you guys can have the iPad sharing station on hand, right? Yeah. And, That's another, a good idea. and another individual, it could be Esto, he can kind of be telling the people that are waiting in line, hey guys, get ready. The, if you guys want, really want to get a really good video, make sure when you guys are on the platform, try to make as much eye contact as the phone comes around, because when you make eye contact, it really creates that difference from a regular video to a really awesome video, because it's like you're making direct eye contact with the lens, right? Uh, gotcha. Yeah. In addition to that, tell them, and make sure you guys turn your airdrop on to accept from everyone. 
uh, because usually people have their airdrop turned on, but they can only accept airdrops from their contacts. And that creates the bottleneck process. Like it, it slows you down a little bit because now they have to go into the settings and make that change, which only takes a few seconds. But if it's about four people, you know, it adds up. Uh, is, is what gotcha. So in yeah. addition to that, because you guys have plenty of people circulating around and you guys are collecting, uh, you know, information and getting everyone hyped. That's the perfect moment. So they walk up to Pat. Pat has, uh, has his iPad Pro uh, and says, yeah, let's get your video. So when they see their video, they're going to trip out. Because like I said, a lot of people have not experienced a 360 booth. So when they see yeah. the video, high quality production shot by a 14 Pro Max, plus you go with 40 to 60 uh, frames per second on Snapic, because you can go lower, but I go higher because I want, like I said, the video to look super dope. Uh, yeah. You're going to see their face light up. You're going to see them. It, it just, they get super happy. Okay. So at that point, Patrick, if you're going to be having the iPad on your hand, have a QR code sticker, have a QR code screen saver, so a QR code that's going to uh, be easy for those same people to scan with their camera so they can leave you a five star review on Google at that moment because their emotions are spiked. And because their emotions are spiked, when you say, hey, we're a brand new business. We're really getting started. We really appreciate it. If you can help us with the five-star Google review. And they'll be like, yeah. Of course, yeah, where? And boom, they'll they'll scan the QR code. It's going to uh, directly uh, to your, uh, yeah. you guys got to have a, did you guys set one up or not yet? Wait, no, I was going to just, I, I don't, I was just going to build it tomorrow. Shit, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, we're still, like I said, we, we literally started last, last Tuesday. So it was our first day, like actually starting the actual uh, process of the, the party and the business in general. So yeah, it's all happening pretty quick, but we kind of wanted to jump into the event and kind of, you know, go in full steam and, and see what, see what happens, you know? Well, I mean, we already got book We already got bookings. We got a book yeah. two bookings in the first 24 hours. So it's cool. Yeah. That's crazy. We've man. been putting out, uh, we've been putting out some decent content, nothing like super, super professional yet, but it's like, you could tell it's, Oh, um, no, the videos are fucked. It, but it, the videos it, are dumb. It's like uh, organic, you know? It's like just genuine uh, content that we're doing behind the scenes and things like that, so. Yeah, it's wholesome. So far, so far it's been great. Yeah, that, that, that's going to make an impact regardless. Uh, but yeah, That's a great idea, though. That I've seen the Google thing. Yeah, I like that a lot. I was going to say, speaking of impact, that's truly capitalizing in that moment is, because, you know, once the po the people leave, it's going to be difficult for them to make time to take 30 seconds to leave you a Google review, especially if they have to look for your business, find it and see if it's even the same business or where they were at. So why not make it easy for them and just give them that, that QR code or a link directly to your page where they can leave you a review right there, right there. And then Damn, we could get a fucking ton of reviews then, yep. but we also, so we're going to have two people running that. And then I have my buddy who's a host at a club here in Chicago. He's going to be, Hosting, so he could be doing that too. I can make sure he gets every fucking person and to leave the review. That's amazing. Another thing that I just recently learned uh, that I, I might start using, but it does take up a good amount of time is this. When you guys use Snapic and you guys text message the video to the client, their phone numbers get stayed into the analytics on Snapic, which allows us as business owners to grab those phone numbers and later on do an email marketing campaign where we'll send them a promo to those same people that already experienced it, which yeah. means that now we have like a, a list, uh, like a, a prospect list of people who already are aware of our services and our style. And so it, it's just easier for us to market to them because they actually know us that we're at the event. So that's uh that's one thing. That's, that's an awesome that. little feature. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's, that that's, that's when you, happening. when you go to your events, obviously you, you have a uh, active YouTube channel, correct? Yeah. So do you have a full-time like uh, photographer with you to, or a uh, um, video guy with you every event? Or is it just like randomly you decide when to bring them? So usually it, it's a, so th there's different ways you can go about it because everyone that starts this business is not as fortunate as you two gentlemen for the fact that you guys have each other, one as a team already, right? Yeah. Plus you guys have experience with videography. And so yeah. people get started and they they probably had a nine to five all their lives and they don't know much about uh, social interaction and customer services. It's just so what I do is if I go to an event and I know it's going to be an event where it's going to be lit, like it's not a basic event, 
Oh, this yeah. is gonna be fucking lit. <laughs> I'll, I'll take I'll take one to two extra people to get a mm-hmm. lot of footage from and like it, that from the back scenes as I was telling you guys earlier. I also had yeah. the team at that event because it's part of my presentation saying like, wow, we're we're getting the uh we're getting the uh Alux, the luxury premium uh staff that you know everyone's in your polo short, uh, shirts with the brand logo and all that great stuff so yeah. um and then there's smaller events of course where i can go knock it out by myself and that gives me the freedom to have my assistant instead of assisting me go take on, on another event that's also two hours long and that just more uh that that helps my profit margins as well if that makes sense because if yeah. I'm assistance with me i'm paying them hourly um and if yeah. it's not really necessary to have them there uh then it it's just not feasible. So if you guys have a lack, if you guys lack content, then every event moving forward, you can always have that person record a bunch of footage. So now you have an, uh, an abundance of footage of content that you can later on edit and have like a month or maybe two months worth of marketing content, if that makes sense. So that means, oh, that, yeah, sure. yeah, so you don't necessarily need, uh, you know, people recording at every single event. Like you don't need to hire someone. If you guys can, like I said, run more. Yeah, you don't have to hire someone. We'll be, I'll be able to do that with my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be able to do that while I'm, dude, I'm bartending. I could, I'll do it. I'll get it. It's that easy. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, which which one do you do? You have the smaller? Do you have one of the smaller three uh, sixties? What was it? The eighty five centimeter? I didn't go with that one, man. I'm 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 actually glad I didn't go with that one. Uh, and then when I got my one hundred centimeter and didn't fit in my Camry, I was bummed out. I was really, really bummed out because then I had to rent vans every single week. Uh, but then I realized the 100 centimeters is, is such, it's like a, the perfect size. I mean, I've seen the 115 centimeter, but I just feel like the the one, the one given the weight and the amount of space it takes up, the 100 centimeter is like, I would call it the sweet spot. Like it's right in, literally in the middle between those two sizes. Uh, and I, yeah. I remember I, I've had people who had issues with the LED booth, the one that has tempered glass on the top with the LED light in the inside. Uh, really? One issue that came up was the stickers that were the inside that the adhesive, I guess, with the heat over time was separating. So it looked kind of weird. I mean, it's hard to tell, but if, if you know your booth and you know the stickers are coming apart in the inside of the tempered glass, then I don't know how you would fix that because I don't have a tempered glass when I kept the very basic metal ones. And um, I also designed magnetic tops because over, after a while, that, that layer that you guys have with your logo it gets yeah. stepped on with heels, cowboy boots, you name it. Yeah. After a while, it gets thrashed. You're going to have to replace that top. And um, that's when I designed some magnet tops, and I was doing it for, like, almost a year. But then it became just too much work for me, guys, and I stopped selling those those 360 magnet tops is what I called them. Oh, okay. Um, what else did I have? What, okay, what other questions? Okay, do you, do we have some – can we go, go, do you go to Snap It real quick? Yeah, all right. So we're going to cover, uh, we're going to go over the ratio and then I'm on it, I guess. Right? Yeah. And do, for it, I could probably use one of those videos that I have just to prep, but you import videos into it. You know what I mean? Like, so I guess you wouldn't. Ah, oh, never mind. Never mind. Let, let me know if, if you want to ask me, uh, whatever. Yeah. I mean, if it comes up here, let me go ahead and open up snap again. Snapix, S N A P P I C, S N A P P. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen with you guys. Okay. Snapix boot, right? Okay. So this is Snapix. I'm just going to go to New Camp, okay? Do we have to do it on a computer? Can I do it on my phone or no? On Snapic, it has to be done on the computer for now. I think that might change though, because Luma Booth, you can do everything from the phone. So, oh, but um, this is just the Snapic is just to create the templates and everything. You just need to do it on the app. You get you got to do it on the computer, but then it obviously transfers to the phone, correct? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So, do you want to download it on your thing real it quick? It didn't. I wouldn't need it. No, I'm saying on your. Uh, if you oh yeah, when we're done. We're done. We're done. Well, we need to do it now. So, let me something I guess you could just show. I guess you could just show me. You're gonna. We're gonna get. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm recording this session, Pat. So, 
everything that I'm doing right now as far as the setup, you guys can uh, later on circle back to this and then do exactly what I'm doing on your laptops. Plus, if you guys want to okay. get curious, you guys can experiment with Snapic a little bit more. I do want to show you this, the, the settings that I select. Uh, and I'm going to okay. dive into it really fast. That way we can get to the Canva part too. I think you had a question about Canva as well, right? Um, You know what? I I use Canva all the fucking time. So got you, got you. just from getting it over to, from Canva to Snapic, yeah. Okay. Maybe. So I'm going to go to video effects right here. And I'm not going to select photo or GIF because I'm going to focus on the 360 booth. Okay. So we're just going to use the video okay. effects right here. And I'm just going to move forward here. Right here, I'm going to call this uh, Pat and Esto right here. Okay. Just uh, have a name and then I'm gonna start it day right now. And then here's another thing guys, uh, for the event info, the event end date, it can be pushed far out. It doesn't necessarily have to be within 24 hours. So if the event's gonna go on for like three days, you can leave it open for three days. Okay. Gotcha, so, gotcha, gotcha. I'm just going to go ahead and just do it for tonight here. And I'm going to go ahead and end it right there, 950. Okay. And now I'm going to okay. go to next. A lot of this stuff right here, uh, we can just blow right past it. But right here, we can either use text, we can okay. use drop or a QR station. These are the three that I use for every single event. I don't use anything else because if they have an iPhone, the airdrop is going to take about two seconds. If they have an Android, I'm going to text message it to them for whatever reason. Uh, if they don't have text messaging or airdrop, but they have data, they have a QR uh, sharing right here. So you can scan the Perfect. QR. Okay. So we'll just use those three then. Yeah. And then okay. you can just set up a quick password. I, I'm just going to do all ones for the sake of this video really fast here. Text messaging. This There's a lot of wording right here, guys. Just, just go hit next. So then we get to the photo booth which we are, we're not gonna use a standard booth, a photo booth, and it gets to the sharing station. Now, what it's telling us right here is, if you if we decide to use a sharing station and we make an overlay for the client, let's say the theme is uh, the Wild West, then okay. that means that if we go to Canva, we can make uh, an attract screen or an animated screen for the actual iPad sharing station itself. And okay. if, if the client that pays attention to detail and they walk over to your sharing station and they see that you created it, an overlay for them for the iPad sharing station as well. Uh, they're going to see that as like very professional, very uh, high end service versus just okay. a plain iPad. So if you guys, you guys have the iPad. And that is, and that is okay. Oh, I see it. Upload a tab screen. Okay. Uh huh. Yep. And then depending on the size of your iPad, it'll tell you the dimensions. That way you guys nail it. So if it's a 10.5 and you guys are going to have the iPad orientation and landscape, it'll tell you. Uh, 2048 by 1536, which is the one that I use. Okay. okay. We'll, do, we'll be using the 11. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we're, we have an 11 inch. So we would use 2388. Well, it, it depends how you're going to have the iPad sharing station, either in portrait mode or- Oh, uh, gotcha. Or, or, or landscape. Or landscape. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then right here, guys, this is upload animated uh, track screen or upload is still a track screen. I, for, for the sharing station, I usually just use a still screen uh, because there's not much, the, the videos are on, on the top and everything else is in the back. So you can't even see the animation. Gotcha. I use a very, very basic one. And then we're going to hit next here. This is just a QR interaction. I don't mess with this as well. I just hit next. And then this is the fun part. This is where we go into the video template and there's, whew, there's a ton of templates. There's a ton of effects. But to make life easier, we can just go to the, the section right here where it says 360 booth. Okay. And we can, there's already existing, uh, look, at, look at all these templates. These are all existing. So what we can do is we can select one and we can still use, use it and really personalize it or leave it as is. And this is what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and select, let's see, this one, fast, slow, reverse. Okay. So I'm going to select this one. An error occurred while loading the save template. Yeah, uh, download failed. See, so, yeah. and go back to that same one. And fast and slow. What does it say? Yeah. Guys, are you guys with me? Yeah, yeah. we got you. Now. We lost you for a second. Yeah, something happened with the internet, and that's why I couldn't select the overlay. But let me go back here. Let me go back. 
Uh, and okay. we left off. We're going to select a template, right? Let me yes. Make, let me make sure that the, we're, I'm still recording this session. Okay. Yeah, it shows recording on our end. Okay. And you guys can see my screen again? Yep. Yeah, yeah we can see it. All right. Cool. We're going to select that template. I'm going to select the 360 booth right over here. There's a lot of options, but 360 booth just simplifies everything. We're going to do a fast, slow reverse. Boom, right here. Okay. Now, this, this area right here is important because right here, we get to select the square, the landscape, and the portrait. Uh, right now, guys, what's really hot, of course, is the portrait, the 1080 by 1920. So when either you, Pat, or Esto, you guys are on Canva creating an overlay, these are the dimensions you're going to punch in. Uh, Got you. Overlay, okay. And then right here, output frame rate. You can do normal or you can do smooth. You guys have a 14 Pro Max. Definitely go with smooth, especially okay. a fast processor and a great camera. If you guys do normal, uh, you'll get, you know, 20 to 30 frames per second. But you guys both know that, you know, the higher the frame rate, the smoother the video looks, right? Yeah, the 60 looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so I would go with the smooth. Right here would be where your over overlay goes. So if I click on here, um, I, I, I delete, oh, no, I have this one. I have an overlay right here. I just I just punched it in and now it's loaded right there. If, I don't okay, know. and that's from, wait, could you do that one more time? Yeah, so this is called the overlay section and it's gonna, okay. I can drop my file in here. So I'll click on right here and then it'll take me to the rest of my desktop and all my options. And I know that I have an overlay that I was working on right here. Gotcha. And it's uploaded, boom, it's done. It's that easy. Uh, awesome. You guys can always add a soundtrack. I don't recommend anyone out add, add, add a soundtrack because eventually we don't own that song. So it's better to not have a soundtrack. And then when your clients go upload their videos on TikTok or they Instagram, they could use it on Instagram or something. Yeah. Yeah. They can just get a song from right there. Right? So right here, yep. where it says fast, slow, reverse. Remember, we talked about how you can save these templates and then have multiple templates on your phone. Yeah. This one, we can name anything we want. We can name it basic. And then save right here. Save to library. Gotcha. Perfect. Uh, and so when you put those, um, like you had that one at the slow reverse, whatever, what yeah. are you doing? What what speed are you doing on the 360 photo booth? So it, it's an interesting question because depending on, because remember that every single production is different because your you're, the effects are you going to hear. And, and let me, let me, let me not skip this step here with you guys. So okay. after we'll, we'll sort of go back to that question, Pat. Uh, cause we're going to okay. get there now. So okay. master, master settings, we already kind of understood this, uh, this, this piece of the dashboard here, this process, but now we're going to go to the recordings right here. Okay. Uh, now this is going to give us a countdown. I like moving mine to five seconds. So when I press the power button on the remote and it starts spinning, by the time I do the five, four, three, it's already spinning around at the same speed. Uh, and, and it's moving, it's, it's moving at, a, at the same speed. It's not barely getting started. So that equals a yeah, yeah. small video. Now for mine, guys, I always go recording duration 10 seconds. The reason I do 10 seconds is because I want to capture a lot of footage and I don't want just one person to get the spotlight. Like on touch picks, the issue was one person will get the slow-mo and then the video will go reloop. Uh, and anyways, I don't want to say anything about them, but it's just the reason I went to Snappic and I'm happy with Snappic because there's so much personalization, customization things you guys can do. So the recording duration, I'm going to leave it at 10 seconds, okay? Now, Perfect. timeline. Now, you said, uh, you mentioned, Pat, how fast the speeds do I pick on the remote? So yes. you guys can can experiment. And this is, this is why it's important to experiment because for the first, this is our first segment, second, third, and it goes on, right? Fourth, okay. on and on. But here, it, what it's telling me is that for the first piece that's going to be recorded for half a second, it's going to be captured. It's going to slow down that portion, that, that video that was recorded at a quarter. So it's like super slow. Okay. So what hap what happens is say for example, you turned on the button and you had it and to like a very slow speed or you minus it twice and the, the arm is just moving like this. Yeah. And the video's already slow down, then that first part man is going to be the slowest video you've ever seen because your arm's already moving slow. Yeah. So you want to you want it to be, like you said, with the five seconds, you'll be spinning full speed yes. by that time. Right. And, right. and so you can and then the app does all that work for you, right? Say that again, Pat. And, and then the app with the recording time, that does all the work for you. As long as it's spinning fast, the app's going to take care of all the 
you know, slow mos and stuff, correct? Right. Awesome. However, however if you, for example, have it, uh, let's see, let's go, let's pick a good one here. here here's a perfect example. Uh, so part number two is going to record for about a, uh, about a second, but it's fast okay. forward twice the speed. So what happens now? Well, if your arm, if you have your arm and you speed up the, the, the controller, you speed up the speed using the controller, you say you hit plus twice and now the arm's spinning yep. as fast as possible. Then that means that when this part comes around, which is the one that's only up for a second, but it's, it's the speed doubles. It's going to look like in the video production, it's going to look super fast in the post-production. Yeah. So uh, I would say try to mess with the settings inside of the dashboard right here and then always have a consistent speed on the arm. So for me, uh, either I'm using regular speed on the arm or I plus it just by one time. So what do you think? I mean, what do you think we should do? I mean, I understand for this first party, yeah. what, what do you think we should try both? Probably right. You okay. Because remember, guys, you, you guys are gonna have a bunch of uh, a, a bunch of folks go on the platform, right? So say for example, you hit power, you get that first recording in with these settings right here. Then you guys get to eyeball it and be like, okay, this is good. But you let's go ahead and try it and, and speed up the arm this time to see how the second video looks like. Gotcha. And, yeah. yeah, perfect. Right. right there, you guys can like uh, adapt and, and say, you know what, let's just leave it for the rest of the night at uh, the uh, first speed or second speed. It's up to you guys, but this is when you when you guys play the the the, the producer director world. Now, when you are controlling it, you don't you don't recommend like having a person controlling it and going back and forth like reversing and everything. You kind of just want it to be on a consistent rotation. Yeah, definitely, because that's gonna have a, an impact on the longevity of your motor on your three hundred and sixty booth. Yeah, yeah, you okay. Guys do that and one. That makes uh huh. Go ahead, Pat. Oh no no no! I was just saying. I said that makes it a little simpler, right? Just. Oh yeah, just, it goes one way. It's, it's predictable the entire time. Uh, if if it doesn't if it doesn't stop fast enough and and something happened, you can grab the arm. You know what cut yeah. what's coming. So definitely. Um, so another cool thing about Snapic is this, guys. So say this is already in, right? And I'm not gonna change much. If you guys look to the right side right here, once the camera phone records for 10 seconds, the actual video, the output video, the final, the rendered version is going to be 29.5 seconds long. So this right here, uh, it tells you exactly how long that video yeah. is going to be. And I think this because is a- it slows down. It yeah. slows down and makes it just, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, but it has speed ramps. Now, if you guys say, you know what, this is too long. We want to keep our videos at 20 seconds long. Then you guys just select one of these sections. And for example, if I selected eight, I'm going to hit the X. Now I brought it down to 9.5 seconds long. Gotcha. Just, just by doing that. Uh, and then you guys can go to preview timeline right here. And now what it's going to, what it's going to do is with the effects and, and uh, the speed ramps that we added, and if we added any extra effects on top of that, it's going to show us right here. So this is how it would look if we went ahead and moved forward with a nine second video. Yeah, I don't want to waste time trying to get this thing to buffer right here. But you guys get the idea of the preview timeline, right? Yeah. So now if you yeah. do X out one of those to, to minimize the time, Man, that's still, that's do you, um, oh is there God. an option to undo what you like X out? Or once you exit out, you're, it's gone. Yeah. So, guess, so for example, if I exit, if I exit, so if I hit the X and now I'm only left with 9.5 seconds, uh, S yeah. what I can do is I can still go to, Add element right here. Yeah. And I can go to app record video and it, and it, and it brings a new session now. And this brings session right here, yeah, it brings it back. But this time I have full and so here. So this is the one I just added. If I go to advanced uh -huh. settings, I can set this to either be the playback range and I can do the speed multiplier as well. So throughout, the, this is what I mean by on Snapic, you gentlemen will be able to really personalize each video. Gotcha. And, and, and seems pretty easy, all right? I mean, it just seemed, it was just a little um, intimidating. When I was looking at it, it's yeah. just nice to have, like, you know, how, you know how to do it. So this is just, it seems pretty easy right now. Right now. When you, when you guys, after your first event, this is going to be easy to you guys. Because you guys are used to editing and uh, and doing video edits in general, 
So th this yeah. will catch on to right away. It's the folks that have never really been dealing with modern day technology that are going to struggle a little bit more. But I'm going to save this right here. Okay. And now this is one of my templates. It's called Basic. This, that's what I titled it. Perfect. And, and then a, you'll have it right there. Yeah, and I have it right there. And if, if, if say, Esto says, hey, man, let's go ahead and also use the other template just in case. Uh, and say, for example, you guys have like a favorite template that you guys go, like to hear. Let me go ahead and go back if I do that. I'm going to add one more. And I'm going to go to uh, saved. And then I'm going to go to like, uh, I have one called the perfect speed ramp right there. Yep. Yeah. And I'm going to the same one portrait. And I'm going to have this one at uh, smooth 40 to 60 frames per second. And I already know the effects on it, and I'm not going to add an overlay, so I'm just going to hit save right here. Boom. Now okay. we have two uh, that we can select from. I'm going to hit next, and then I'm going to go to create event, and now the event is created. So all I'm going to do now is go on my iPhone, and I'm going to launch the event. I'm going to show you guys how that looks as well. Give me a second here. Okay. So you've only been doing it a year, huh? That's crazy. It's amazing, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. The, but how many subscribers on uh, YouTube do you have? How many what? How many subscribers on YouTube? Oh, uh, last time I checked, I was like at uh, 9,700 around there. Congratulations. Yeah, that is awesome. amazing. Thanks, man. Yeah. Awesome. Good for you. Yeah, just sharing the journey. You know, that's all I'm doing is just sharing yeah. the journey. Who knows where, where, where uh, I'm going to go next in life, but this is this is an interesting chapter. So, Oh, absolutely. You're doing great, man. Keep it up. Thank you, guys. So I'm going to share my phone with you, my my screen on my device here. All right. Let's see. Yeah, I know. I'm going to go to the... There you go. And share. All right, sweet. So I'm going to go ahead and enter... I'm going to go into Snapic right here. Snapic. So I'm going to go to okay. So I'm going to go to refresh because I have a few events. Uh, but I'm going to go to live events. And the, the live events will be what if it's if your events that day we created in Snapic, it's going to be right there. It's going to be right there as long as you hit create event, although and, and then you reach the reach the last page on the Snapic website. Um, yeah, as, as long as you get that, congratulations. Uh, and then you end up on this screen right here where it says Pat and gotcha. And then it shows view analytics, manage gallery, all kinds of uh, stuff that's going to allow you to go back and edit anything you want. But let's go ahead and go back to the device right here. I'm going to select our event. I'm just going to press on my phone screen here. And it takes me to this menu or this dashboard. I'm going to use my, I'm going to use configured camera. I'm going to use my back camera. The back camera always has the highest quality. You guys have an iPhone 14 Pro Max. You guys can do the back camera or you guys can yep. do the, uh, either the dual or the ultra wide and maybe test this out in the comfort of your home to see if there's only any noise. What I mean by noise, if it looks too grainy by using either the dual wide or the ultra wide, then just do the uh, back camera because that's what's going to give you that cleanest look. Okay. Um, that's the best camera on the phone. Yeah, you, you want to use this back here, this, right? Yeah. So I'm yeah, going to go okay. ahead and, I'm going to go to done and then start booth right here. And now it's loading up all my events, all of my settings, my overlays, all that great stuff. And then it takes gotcha. me to this adjust, adjust camera settings. Right now, guys, I would say leave everything on auto as far as the, the, the exposure and the ISO goes because sometimes you guys will end up at a venue where the lighting is changing and sometimes you'll notice that your phone does a great job at adjusting itself with the auto settings instead of doing manual. Um, gotcha. So, and then uh, next part that's really important is a stabilizer right here. So I'm gonna go to stabilize and then you guys have options to do the off standard cinematic. I leave mine at cinematic. This is gonna reduce the amount of wiggle. It, it, it's kind of like an IBIS or what you would call on other phones, like a stabilizer. So I leave mine gotcha. at cinematic and I'm going to go to submit start the booth and now when I go to video right here 
These are my options. I could go with the basic or the perfect ramps. Now you guys can have a few here if you want. Usually I have uh, two or three. And now okay. I'm going to go with the perfect. Uh, let's, I'm just going to do the basic actually because it's right there. I'm going to do the basic. Yeah. And I'm going to hit the arrow right here on the top. Cool. And now it says tap to start, right? So I'm going to tap to start. Boom. And it's going to do that, that countdown. It's five seconds. And it's going to record for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, as the phone is spinning, you guys are going to see on the phone itself because the screen's facing you. You guys will be able to tell that the progress bar, it's almost coming to an end. And then you can hit pause and then the arm will slow down. And look at how fast it's rendering. Can you guys see? Yeah, yeah, yeah we see it. Yeah, that's that's how fast it's rendering right now. Uh, and then that's that's the actual playback right there. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah. And then now I can go to airdrop and airdrop it to anyone that has their airdrop turned on, or I can go to text message and text someone, or I can do the uh, the QR uh, code right here. If I hit QR code, they'll just scan that with your camera. Awesome. Yeah. It, it, it's, uh, it gets really easy after like the first event, guys. I love it. I love it. Go ahead and exit out of here. Now, now, just a suggestion for this first event, since it's pretty much brand new to us. Do you, uh, you probably wouldn't suggest us focusing so much on like perfecting, obviously, the app, but more so like making sure people are interacting and and we we're pr pretty much marketing our our company in a way, right? Yeah, the cool thing is, I'm not trying to answer the question for you, but. <laughs> No, the, the the fact that you guys are using Snapic, right? And the fact that Snapic already has presets and yeah. all you really have to truly do is come up with a unique overlay for your event. And like I said, just select 40 to 60 frames per second. Then Just Snapic leave it at that for the whole set. For I the was going to say, Snapic's going to do all the heavy lifting for you guys, which allows okay. you guys to focus on other parts of the actual event. You know, the presentation, the interaction, and the overall immersive feeling of what it is to work with you guys as a team, as, as, a, as a business. Um, yeah. so that's the cool thing is that once you're done with Snapic, then like I said, it, it's going to do everything for you. You guys have an iPhone 14 Pro Max. It doesn't get better than that right now. Yeah. So these are all just pre-settings before the event starts and then just leave them at, yep. at that And then we just go on the phone. We have our template. These, Blitz, these, boom, play. These are the parts where uh, we definitely have to sit down in front of a laptop unless you guys get an assistant in the future. And then sometimes yeah. creating that overlay, sometimes you'll have a customer that says, I love it. Boom. You, you got it done in like 10 minutes or less. And sometimes you'll have clients that'll be like, can we do this? Can we change that? And then just a client that really knows what they want. And it pushes us to a point where we we have to better ourselves at, our, at, at the craft. You know, like we yeah. can't be salty about it. Like, man, they didn't like it. No, you just yeah. get a chance to explore new designs and new elements on camera and things yeah. like that.